So yesterday we saw an announcement on the Oxygen Facebook group and several other places about a new page builder that's going to be coming to market soon called Breakdance. Why on the Oxygen group? Because it comes from the same developer behind Oxygen. So Lewis has released the alpha build of Breakdance, which is open for anybody to test out for no cost whatsoever. This is going to be an annual subscription model when the final is released. So this is not going to be a lifetime deal in the same way that you have with Oxygen. Now, speaking of Oxygen and Breakdance, so if you take a look at the Oxygen Facebook group, you'll find there's a lot of comments, questions and threads on there about the future of Oxygen, how Breakdance is going to affect this and lots of other things. You can imagine there's a lot of people that are a little bit frustrated, a little bit annoyed and some other people that are jumping to the defense. Which side of that fence you decide to land on is entirely up to you. However, I would say maybe stay away from there for a couple of days to let things settle down and kind of find their ground, shall we say. But what exactly is Breakdance and why does this have anything to do with Oxygen and what's the future of this and so on? Well, Breakdance is a new page builder aimed more at the entry level user in the same way that you've got Bricks Builder, you've got Elementor, those kinds of tools. So there's a lot less of those pro advanced kind of features that you see in a tool like Oxygen, and it's more geared towards quicker and easier starting sides of things. So today we're gonna to take a quick look at the roadmap because there is one and like Oxygen, there's also we'll take a look at the features and we'll take a look at the builder. And at the end of the video, I'll give you my thoughts and feelings about what I think of Breakdance and how things have actually gone ahead. But no dramas, this is entirely up to the individual to decide where they actually land on the argument. Okay, so first of all, let's take a quick look at the Breakdance website. So if we take a look at the Breakdance site, you can see there's information about it. There's a feature list on here. There's integrations, FAQ, roadmap, and so on. There's also a video that gives you an overview of exactly how this is going to work and so on. So I would recommend checking those out. And while you're at it, I would also recommend checking out Permaslag's video, which I'll link in the description below from a live stream he did yesterday, going over Breakdance, some of his findings with it, and also about an hour long interview with Lewis, where he answers a lot of the questions that you may have about the future of oxygen, why this breakdance has come about and lots of other things. So I would recommend checking that out if that's of interest to you. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the features. So we've now got a WooCommerce integration. There's 100 plus elements. You've got full site editing, menu builder, form builder, global styles, dynamic data and conditions, which my understanding is, I think this is only supporting ACF and toolset right now, but maybe that'll open up to future ones, other ones like Metabox and so on, I don't know. Performance and SEO and design library. Now obviously, Oxygen is known for its optimization and for being a fast loading uh, tool when it comes to building websites and hopefully Breakdance will kind of continue to take that same thing with it. Let's have a little look at the roadmap and see what exactly is going on. So we don't have any feature requests right now because this has literally just come out. Bug reports, obviously, if you want to follow the bugs, you find bugs, if you test this out, you may want to submit those and the change log. So basically the roadmap has bugger all on it right now. Okay, so let's just say we've done everything we want. I've already gone ahead and installed this now anyway. So if we come over into the dashboard of my test website, you'll see we have a new entry now called Breakdance. And inside there, we've got some settings, some templates, headers and footers, those kinds of things. So first of all, let's just head over into the settings and see what's inside there. Because once you set this up, you're going to have to kind of configure things on a site basis anyway. So once you jump over into the settings section, first of all, you're going to have your license inside there which you get a totally free license if you want to test this out while it's in alpha and probably in beta prior to the official release. Jumping over to the global styles, you can see we can launch Breakdance from here. And one thing I did notice in my very, very brief look over things is that there's a lot of options when you want to work with custom classes and so on. So if you're used to working with tools like Webflow or you're used to working with Oxygen and Bricks Builder, where classes play an integral role in styling various different elements and having quick and easy ways of just globally changing things, global styles and those classes options should give you more than enough options. Hopping over to the theme section, you can see we can disable the WordPress theme system. So again, much the same as what you see in a tool like Oxygen. WooCommerce integration, I don't have WooCommerce enabled right now, but you can enable that and then you have WooCommerce options. And as this kind of matures, I will take a little bit more of a deeper dive into this. This is kind of really more of a cursory look. Good to see we've got user access control, so you can see we can choose exactly who can edit and what they can edit and so on. And again, if you use anything like Elemental, Bricks, even Oxygen, 
This is all going to be very, very familiar with you. You've also got the ability to impersonate a user with edit content access. So probably quite useful if you want to just check the access levels without having to worry about setting up another account if you're an administrator and so on. Maintenance mode. So we have a maintenance option built in to stop anybody that shouldn't have access to the site, only seeing a maintenance page, those kinds of things. Performance options, you can see we've got some options inside here for things we want to enable or disable to optimize WordPress itself. So again, nice to see those options. Your API key is going to allow you to convert up to various different tools like MailerLite, ActiveCampaign, those kinds of things. Post types, we've got the editing with breakdowns will only be enabled for the above post types. So you can choose exactly what you want to enable. So if you have WooCommerce enabled, custom post types. Uh, sort of different plugins that may create custom post types of their own. You can enable or disable the breakdance builder in those particular post types. Advanced gives you the option to apply the content filter to breakdance content. Again, as it says, an advanced feature. And again, we can take a look at these in more detail. Custom code is going to give you your global code. So if you want to insert things like your Google Analytics code, pixel code, those kinds of things in the header or the footer, it can all be done inside here. And finally, we have tools. So this will do things like replace the URL if you've got anything kind of funky going on when you move from a development site over to a live site, you know, a live server, those kinds of options. Regenerating your cache. So useful settings inside there. You've also got a form builder built into this. So you can see form submissions can be stored inside the database, which you can export as a CSV. We can deal with pop-ups inside here at some point anyway, once we go out. Global blocks, as his name would suggest, this is going to allow you to create global blocks that can be used on any page or post or template. Headers and footers, probably going to be your global headers and footer options. And finally, you've got your templates, which allows you to, as his name would suggest, add a template so we can click. And we can choose different kinds of templates. You can see who is supported inside you, your single post, your archive, your 404, your search results, and so on. Or you can create your own custom template. And under home, that's just going to be the home kind of thing. So I'm sure if you've used any other kind of page builder, including Oxygen, which is a sort of more of a site builder, there's going to be a lot of options inside you've already seen. Let's go ahead and create a page, though. Let's go and add a new page. And we can give this a title. So we'll just call this... Breakdance test, we'll save our draft and we'll just choose to edit with breakdance. Now, I can't help but say the color scheme is a little reminiscent of another page builder that you could possibly call Bricks, which maybe isn't the best thing to differentiate yourself in the market. If you're creating a new page builder, it looks very much the same in style and color scheme as a competing product. So. We'll just leave it at that. Anyway, so let's take a quick look at the interface. It's a very simple stripped down interface. You can see on the left hand side, we can click on add and that will open up all the panel on the left hand side for the various different blocks, the various different building uh, elements, your widgets, whatever you want to call them. You've also got the option to add an element inside you. You can choose what page you want to edit, which is nice to see. It's allow you to sort of quickly move around and access things. You've got a list of responsive options, which you can easily switch between. You can see that will switch and update things on the page, which is nice to see. Undo, redo, we've got the option then for our structure panel. We've also got the global settings, classes, history and preferences option. Very reminiscent of Oxygen. Save, as its name would suggest, is going to save things. And let's go ahead and take a look at building something. So if we click on add, you can see we can search for things. So we can just search and easily access those. Drop a section inside. Once you've added a section in, we open up the options on the right hand side. This is going to show us our structure panel. And then we've got all the different options for, in this case, a section. So your layout, your background, your colors, and so on. So if you come into your layout, you've got a basic Flexbox model options inside you. So you can nest sections inside and you can nest divs inside and all those kinds of things. You can open up different options to get access to more options. Now, the first thing I would say when it comes to the interface is I don't mind the monochromatic kind of layout that looks actually quite nice, but it would be nice to have something that when you open up an expanding panel, it stands out a little bit better. Maybe put a glow around it, just something from a usability point of view that makes it quick and easy to see exactly what's going on. The second thing that's kind of a bit weird is if you look at the branding for Breakdance, I keep wanting to call it bricks, so please excuse me if I accidentally do that. It's a yellow color, a golden yellow color. And the same thing goes when you go into your actual site and you want to activate it. But once you come into it, it's all blue and black, which kind of makes you feel like you're in a different builder. 
silly little nitpicky things, but it would be much better if they had a consistency of color scheme. So all of your highlight accent colors were either yellow or the website itself and anything to do with uh, breakdance was blue and the dark gray black kind of color. So you can see inside here, we've got options for alignment options. You can see we've got the gap option, vertical align and horizontal align, your background colors. So you can open all these options up. If you've got anything, then you've got various different options inside you for your background. So you can see there's four different kinds of things. You've got images, gradients, videos, and slideshows, overlay options. So the interface is snappy. It feels really quick to move around, which is nice. You can see all the options inside you for spacing. You can click to change the various different uh, units of measurement you want to work with. You can see when you hover over anything that's got the ability to have various different values for your different responsive modes, that highlights and drops out. You can then choose from there what you want to access and set things up. Now, the other thing that I don't really like is that they kind of show and hide, which is okay from a viewpoint of view, so you keep things nice and clean and streamlined. However, it's very easy to miss those options if you don't think to hover over the panel and wait for that to actually transition in. So I would much rather see those being there all of the time. Just makes things a little bit easier. I can understand the reasoning behind taking those away just to clean up the interface and make it look a little smoother and sleeker. But I think that's kind of counterintuitive when it comes to knowing exactly what options are available when you hide them away. You can then come over to the more advanced options and you can see inside here, we've got the ability to add in custom CSS. You can add in your own custom classes. So we could just call this, now uh, wait, you hit enter or return, nothing actually happens. You've got to hit, hit add on there to add that in. So we've now got a custom class associated with this section. And if we come over to our classes, we can come into our classes and selectors and we get this kind of weird search panel that hides pretty much everything, but we can click to open up and there's our selector. You can see there's our custom class, which is what we've just created. And now we can go ahead and we can configure various different parameters for that custom class. So classes play a big role from what it appears inside Breakdance, which if you've ever used those, you'll know how important they can be and how they can speed up the whole process of building websites. So it's good to see that that is quite an integral part. And again, if you were used to working with Bricks Builder or Oxygen, you're going to find this kind of thing very, very comfortable to work with. One thing I do like on here, though, is this little option that says where this particular class is being used on the page you have open and how many times it's being used. And if you click on it, it will actually give you this highlight bounding box so you can immediately see exactly where that class is being applied. A great, really cool visual way of quickly being able to access that and see exactly where things are on the page. So that's pretty cool. And you can just disable it and you can go ahead and delete it. But at the moment, there's no way that I can find of actually going ahead and renaming this if you make a bit of a mistake. However, there's a lot of pretty cool options inside you, including custom CSS that's down to the class as opposed to just the actual widget itself. Really, really cool to see those options inside there. Now, if we open the global settings option on the right hand side, you can see now we can configure global settings for the entire site. So your colors, your brand, your buttons, your primary and your secondary, your typography that you want including all the normal options inside there for Google fonts. And you can see your base font size. And again, you can set this up in various different values, your VH, your, your M's, your M's, your pixels, percentages, and so on. If you're going to advanced, you can see inside there, you've got body headings and links. And again, we can open that up. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this pop out and pop out and pop out, pop out. I'd much rather a sort of more expanding kind of interface, but you know, this is just a personal preference. I don't think there's anything particularly inherently wrong with this, but I would like to see just a little bit of visual differentiation between those pop-outs so you can quickly and easily see exactly what's a pop-out and what isn't part of the interface. You know, silly little things, but they do make a difference when you're working with something like this day in, day out. Then you've got your containers. You can see, again, we've got lots of pop-outs, container width, and so on. So there's a lot of options inside here. Let's come back over to the options on the left-hand side and go ahead and click on Add. And if we scroll down, you can see we've got blocks. Now blocks are basically templates. You can see, let's just get rid of this first one. We'll click to get rid of it. We'll say we want to put in something like a basic list. You can click and there's your basic list. And now you've got some basic options to edit the various different parts of that. You can add additional items. You can de de delete items. You can duplicate items. And then you've got the option to come in and adjust any of the styling that's associated with it. And this leads me on to one of the other things you can see. Now you've got this little dot to the left-hand side of any of the parameters that have been changed or edited because this is kind of using basic elements 
to create this uh, overall combined component, various different parameters have already been set up. So if you expand that out, you can see marker type, emoji, below item, padding, marker position, and so on, have all been edited to work inside this. And each one of those has this little dot. But again, it's one of those things that if you have a, a pretty high resolution screen, I've got a 4K screen, but I've got this sort of pushed down to about 1440, it's quite small. Well, if you go to a 4K and things get even smaller, I think you could very easily miss that. So it'd be much nicer to see that larger and in color. So you can immediately see things have been changed on that particular uh, sort of set of settings. All the options you'd expect inside here, but it's a much more simplified kind of set of tools because you are working with a fully built out component as opposed to just basic building block elements. And if you come into the cog, you can see this gives us more of the advanced settings. So much the same as what we're used to with most of the page builders we've seen on the market right now. Got nice things like hide on breakpoints. So you can choose to hide this based upon the different breakpoints that you have set up. You've also got conditions built in. So you can see we can open up to edit conditions. We can add conditions inside here. We can choose various different kinds of conditions, whether the users are logged in and so on. Nice to see things like this inside the builder, even at an alpha build stage, because it means that's one less plugin we need to handle what I would always consider to be very basic functions in any kind of page builder. So kudos for having that inside here. So we could also come in now where we can stack these on top of each other. So we can say user role is one of, and we can say is administrator, and we can add another condition, and we can say is logged in or author or featured image. And you can see we can set this to and, or we can set additional conditions inside here. So there's lots of different options when it comes to the conditions. So it's really good to see that, and we can easily add and remove any of those inside here as well. We've even got animations inside here. So you can see we've got scrolling, entrance, and sticky animations. And again, we can enable those, and any parameters then that are applicable will open up and expand out. So even for an alpha build, there's an awful lot that's included in this particular product right now. So it's good to see some of these things. We've also got dynamic information. So let's get rid of this completely, get rid of the section. Let's just add something like a heading in. And you'll see that we've just got a basic heading. So we come over to the left-hand side, and again, you'll see we've got that hidden element that only when we hover over do we see that there's actual dynamic data available to us. So we can click on the little database icon, and that brings up a very familiar interface for any Oxygen user where you can grab your dynamic data. You can filter and search for this. You can choose how you want to filter. So there's lots of quick ways of going ahead and finding what you want. I'm not the biggest fan of this layout. I kind of feel like it's a bit of a useless amount of space. But if you like this kind of layout, then it's going to work perfectly fine for you. And like I say, if you're coming from Oxygen, this is going to feel very, very familiar. So you can see we've got things like your featured image, your post information, your archive site info, author, current user, URL queries, and utility. So there's a ton of options inside you to grab additional information from dynamic data. So if you wanted to, you could just simply grab the title for this particular post or page. And there you go. That just pulls in the relevant data for us. And we can expand this if you want to. And you can see we've got advanced options. And much the same as we have with a tool like Elementor Pro, you've got your fallback, your prepend, and append text. So you can add anything you want inside there. So if you're moving over from a tool like Elementor Pro, this is going to feel very familiar to you. And let's go and add something else in. Let's click on the text option again in the dynamic data. And you can see we've got custom field data. So we click on custom field data. We can now go ahead and grab custom field information. So if we expand that out, we can choose the key. So if I know the key, for example, I've got price as a key on a custom field. You can see that will now pull that data in. And again, we've got that advanced option for your fallback prepend and append. So you can say, well, we want to prepend this with the currency symbol. And that will then pull in the currency symbol that we want to use. So you can see it's relatively simple and straightforward to pull in dynamic data. And you can use this, obviously, with your template structure and so on. So that's the basics of the, the editor itself. You can see if we just come back out of this, we can hit Save on there, for example. We can exit out of this and we can go back to the front end or exit to WordPress. And there's our post or page all set up. Let's come back out of this, go back into Breakdown. So let's take a look under Templates. So we can say Add a Template, and we can say we want to do something like the single post. Now you can see we've got our single post, which we can come in and we can edit that in Breakdance. We can go to the settings or we can trash it. Let's just submit to the settings first of all. 
I will click on continue and you can see now this allows us to choose the location, add any conditions and the priority of this particular template if you have multiple templates. So you can see if we open this up, we can then go ahead and we can change exactly where this is going to be used if we've done it by mistake. You can also add any conditions inside here. So again, you've got your normal kind of conditions or you could have a kind of global catch all if you wanted to. You can even come down to things like days of the week, the current time, the current date and so on. So there's a lot of options you can use inside this. Let's get rid of the condition for now and hit save on that. And then if you come into edit with breakdance, you can see that takes us into the editor now and we can go ahead and we can start adding our various different elements. So we can say we want to grab the heading, for example, we can click on it, come back over, choose our dynamic data, say we want this to be our post title. You can see that now pulls in a sample post title. We can add some more options in. So let's add a rich text field in and click on dynamic data and we'll say post content. There's our post content. So you can see how quick and easy you could build this up, apply your conditions and so on to it. So I this is the first I've literally just tested this out. It kind of feels like what you're already used to. So I don't think you'd have too much of a problem working with it. And if you want to open up your structure panel on the right hand side, you can see we can also come into here. We can copy this, delete it, save it as a global block. We can reposition things if we want to very easily, which actually works considerably better than what it does inside Oxygen. So there's a lot of things to like at this early phase. However, it doesn't really separate itself that much from the other builders out there that we already have that are quite established. So this kind of leads me on to, do we really need another builder in the market for WordPress that does basically what a lot of the other ones do? There's some nice features inside you that I think are definitely good to be included. Dynamic data straight out of the box, conditional logic, those kinds of options. I always like to see those included. However, I can't help but think, is this going to be a difficult sell? Because I can't see you attracting a lot of your Oxygen users because Oxygen, if they're using that, is probably a more advanced platform and therefore they have no real need for this. Plus your market is relatively small with around, I think, 30,000 users. The other side then is you've got tools like Elementor that have millions of users. You've got Bricks Builder, which has come out of the market just over a year ago that's already much further down the line and includes pretty much everything you can see in Breakdance that I've seen so far and has a pretty strong support network behind it and a pretty strong community behind it. I can't help but feel that Breakdance has kind of shot itself in the foot in the way that it launched because it's already got a lot of bad feeling inside the Oxygen community. And that's a difficult thing. So my thoughts are, it's a great start. It's interesting to see where it's going, but I do wonder how much of a shelf life this will have. And if you've got people that are already using Oxygen or want something simpler, just to be able to work with clients on a simpler kind of way and like the Oxygen kind of way of working and this feels familiar, I do kind of feel like some of those might have a little bit of trepidation based upon the way that this has been developed and Oxygen maybe feels a little bit slow in the way that it's being pushed forward and releases are coming out. But as always, I would love to get your thoughts and feedback on what you think about Breakdance, how you feel this impacts Oxygen, what you think the future of both of these products are. Would you adopt this? What are your thoughts? Drop those in the comment section down below. And don't forget to check out Permaslag's video with the interview with Lewis behind Breakdance and Oxygen. Link will be down in the description below so you can check that out. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.